Thanks, uh, Deputy Kenny. It's next. Th thanks, Cahillig, and um, I want to thank um, Virgin um, Atlantic Airways for coming before the committee, and uh, thank Mr. Uh, Thompson for his statement. No, there's just one or two things in the statement. Um, you're urging us to, to act on behalf of the Irish consumer, you know, and you know, as, as TDs, members of Parliament, as members of this committee, you know, I can assure you, well, speaking personally, I'm sure other the members that we do that that is the uppermost in our mind, you know, that the interest of the Irish consumer and that the interest of the Irish air traveller is the, the uppermost priority in our minds. And uh, if we weren't doing that, I think we would be certainly be very remiss. The, 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 some of my questions are similar to the ones that have been already asked. You know, you, you were saying you, you, uh, you get a lot of uh, business from onward flights coming out of Ireland. Do you employ people directly? Do you have direct agents or do you have, uh, you know, have you people directly employed by Virgin Atlantic Airways in Ireland? Uh, so we, we have, a, we have a, a sales team that represents Virgin Atlantic in Ireland. It's a relatively small team and we work through travel agents uh, distributing tickets in Ireland. Where is that team based? Uh, I would have to go and clarify okay. the, where those yeah, people are you placed. Do, but you do actually provide employment directly in Ireland? Uh, I believe so. We will have to, oh, okay, have right. to clarify that. Because I'm trying to find out what is the direct benefit to the Irish eco economy from Virgin Atlantic Airways. You know, you're, you're, a, you're a worldwide carrier, and, and um, you know, but I'm just trying to quantify what if there are the direct benefits, you know, to, 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 from your operations to the Irish economy. And perhaps you might come back to me on that again. Yeah. The, the, um, you know, I think what you're really arguing for, as I, as I understand it, is that you want all of the existing interline agreements to remain as they are. You know, and in the commercial world where everything is changing all the time, you know, is that realistic? You know, how realistic is, is your sort of um, request that all of the existing interline agreements remain exactly as they are and not be affected by any takeover of Aer Lingus by anybody else? So, I th I th what, what, we're, what we're seeking is to make sure that what is quite a technical element of the aviation business is actually reflected in the remedies that are applied to this transaction. So, I, I recognise and applaud the efforts of this committee and others in Ireland to review the impact uh, of the proposed transaction between IAG and Aer Lingus. But the, 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 what the simple way of looking at this and the prevalent way of looking at these types types of arrangements in the past is to think about what aeroplanes do because it's the most visible illustration of how an airline operates. Flights operate between point A and point B and in this case a lot of the focus has been on the overlapping routes that Aer Lingus and BA operate today um, between Ireland and the UK but that, that fails to recognise the fact that customers and consumers often do different things to what the airline does. If there isn't a direct service between two points, customers have to make connections. And those, the interests of those consumers are just as important as the interests of point-to-point -point consumers on direct flights. And our perspective is that the interests of those consumers, and yes, the interests of Virgin Atlantic are aligned with the interests of those consumers, as are the interests of many of our competitors at Heathrow as well. So I, I think that the reason why we're here today and why we have expressed our concerns about elements and potential consequences of this transaction are related to a group of consumers whose interests haven't been reflected so far. Uh, and in terms of the, having to deal with changing competitive dynamics in a marketplace, we do that all the time. The, the airline industry uh, is very susceptible to changing external conditions and we have to deal with that all the time. And, and we will do. Uh, and we'll continue to do that in the course of our everyday business. But where a transaction between companies creates co consumer harm, regulators have a responsibility to act. And I think what we're trying to do today is highlight the interests of a group of consumers whose interests haven't been reflected in the debate to date. Well, I think perhaps we might take issue with that. You know, that we would feel that, that we are acting as watchdog for the Irish consumer as well as everybody else, you know? 